Welcome to today's, I guess we'll call this a lakeside chat um, with Dave Fate, founder and CEO of Stonebriar Commercial Finance. Thanks for joining me, Dave. Thanks for having me, Jesse. I appreciate it. No, um, absolutely, man. And uh, I love your office. That's an awesome setup that you have there, man. So um, it's a good you're view. Not, you're not getting my traditional fireplace. I'm in upstate New York this week. So I like it. Background. But um, appreciate you taking a few minutes here, Dave. And, you know, for those people who might not be familiar with yourself, um, do you mind just kind of talking about your career to date in equipment finance? Sure. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm one of the lucky ones, I think. I, uh, you know, I started out in this industry right out of college uh, with CIT back in uh, Wichita, Kansas. Um, after, I, I can't remember, five years or so, CIT went through a, you know, kind of a reorganization and closed a lot of the field offices and moved them to the large corporate cities. And that's how I uh, ended up getting the opportunity to move to Dallas, which was a great move. And, you know, obviously been here a long time and, you know, run a number of businesses here. So that's, uh, you know, that's how I ended up here. We, uh, you know, through a mutual customer, a year after I moved here, I ended up uh, taking a job with ITT Capital Finance as the number two risk officer as they had basically replaced an entire management team at that time. Uh, and that's, that's kind of a common theme. A lot of our guys all come out of the risk side of the business. Uh, but I got to meet a lot of good people there that are still in this industry that I'm, and are still, uh, a number of them still working with me. Uh, you know, Jeff Wilkinson and Dirk Stock and Ron Lynn, I all met at the ITT uh, shop. Uh, uh, Steve White, who, uh, you know, ran Global Capital Markets for GE, uh, he and I met at that time, did a lot of business together, and he's part of our organization now, one of our founders, and, you know, so just a lot of uh, history that goes back there to the, uh, you know, the time I moved here, and, you know, sold, sold that business at one point in time, and started the Transamerica business in the mid-90s, and ran that for another 10 years, and ended up selling that off, both of those to GE, so that was a, uh, it was a good time if you had to sell something to have a good buyer out there like GE. Yep. And, you know, started the AIG business in the early 2000s, 2004, and you know ran that for about 10 years before we decided to uh, you know go out on our own and and uh, start our own business, uh, which we launched in the spring of 2015. So uh, you know, six and a half years into this, it's uh, it's been a good run. I've got a little more gray hair than I used to have, but uh, you know, still uh, still feel awfully good about the business and the industry we're in. No, and, and thank you for that. So, uh, you know, in talking about Stonebriar, um, mind just kind of talking about the history there and um, just a little bit more about your organization? Well, yeah, sure. We're, um, you know, we're a privately owned independent. Uh, we're a large business, you know, we're a three and a half billion dollar balance sheet. Uh, you know, don't really have a, uh, you know, really good comp, if you will, to uh, compare us to in the independent world. Uh, we're primarily a leasing company. We like to own and lease the assets that, uh, you know, that customers buy and need to, uh, you know, need to run their businesses with integral essential assets, probably 67% of our balance sheet are leases, uh, which makes us very unique, uh, especially post, uh, you know, Dodd-Frank, Dodd Basel III, things like that. You know, we go to market in a number of vertical platforms. The general equipment business is our, is our largest. It's over half the size of the business. And, uh, you know, that's where, you know, a lot of the originations come from. We have a rail car leasing business, which is something we've always, uh, you know, ran in our, in our past. And I know we're over 7,000 cars and we have an order placed and, you know, things like that. So not many people in that business, but all brand new cars and, you know, doing very well. Uh, you know, we have a, a aviation capital business uh, anchored by a, um, you know, a key strategic partner in FlexJet. Uh, I think everybody knows that uh, story a little bit and a good team running that business. And we have a real estate business that's uh, kind of an industrial commercial mortgage business. And we're really branching out into all kinds of other areas in that from franchise to, uh, you know, another you know, uh, credit tenant leases, things like that. So that's currently how we think about the, uh, you know, the construct of the business, but it, it works really well. And what it, what it does is create what we always have been, which is a diversified commercial finance company you're just not married to one industry or asset class. And when risk and return gets out of balance, you know, you don't, you're not forced to deploy capital into a, uh, into adverse selection in the marketplace. And um, that's why these portfolios perform so well, you know, zero credit losses in this business from the day we started it almost, you know, seven into our seventh year, wow. eight ABS wow. issuances for four and a half billion dollars, uh, you know, all perform extremely well. The, uh, 
you know, the 70 plus investors that we have in those programs uh, obviously have a very good uh, history with us. The bonds always get upgraded. You know, they look, uh, makes them look good and, you know, just continues to uh, help us diversify the right side of the balance sheet. It's kind of how we think about that. So I know I'm shortchanging it a little bit, but that's, uh, you know, that's kind of how we think about the business. How are you finding inventory right now? Well, if inventory, you mean by uh, deals, uh, you know, our <laughs> pipeline's big. I, I'll tell you, we've got, I don't know, we've probably funded a half a billion dollars year to date or so. We've got, uh, you know, seven or eight, 780 some million in approved backlog and hundreds of millions in credit and proposal. We've got $2.8 billion on our, our uh, business activity report. So there's, a, there's always a lot of deals. Uh, the biggest change I see so far this year is just getting them to fund. Supply chain disruption, manpower, materials, and, uh, you know, just people to get uh, a widget from point A to point B. It just keeps uh, dragging out. Yeah, that's uh, where I was going with that because, you know, I have a friend out in Arizona and he sells aircraft parts, right? And it's, they have the demand, but they don't have any inventory. <laughs> yeah, yeah like the corporate aviation market's on fire. You just can't find a, Crazy. you can't find a used asset anywhere. And that's not going to change in our opinion. Uh, it only takes about a thousand people to go from commercial to uh, to uh, private, and it has a significant impact on the uh, on that industry, and it has, it has. So, so uh, speaking of um, of the organization that you said seven years old, right? Yeah, we're six and a half uh, years this month. So I like to say we're in our seventh year now. That's seventh. <laughs> so um, you know, congrats on you know being the monitor number one independent. Um, that's really exciting, Dave. So great job to, um, to you and your team. What is that? What did that mean to you guys when that came out? Oh, I mean, it's, uh, you know, I, I think our industry is a lot like baseball. Uh, we measure and we measure and manage everything and there's a lot of data and, you know, stuff like that. we you know, we're, uh, we're very good. Uh, we're very good participants in all the surveys and all the, uh, all the data you have to fill out for all the various organizations. And so, you, you know, you get to analyze that data and draw your conclusions however you want. Um, you know, it took, uh, you know, it took my good friend, Tom Depping and to Ascendium to get bought by a bank to, uh, to knock us, uh, to knock us from, move us from second place to first place on the origination volume. Uh, I always like to, uh, I always like to give them a little harder time that, uh, you know, I've got a bigger balance sheet and I've got 48 people and he's got 550, but, uh, you know, completely different businesses. Right. Totally. So we're, I mean, we're proud of the rankings. We like, you know, we're the largest in volume, AUM volume by employee, by, a, a, a you know, a wide margin. We don't have a lot of people running around here. We have a lot of good people that really, and that's the key. Uh, you know, we continue to upgrade the talent diversify the talent and, and have generational depth in the uh, organization, which, uh, you know, something I've been championing, uh, you know, within the LFA ranks since the uh, early 2000s. So, and it's worked, it's worked extremely well for us. So I feel very good about it. No, I mean, I uh, was down at your user group in May. Um, and when I, I was excited when we got the invitation and then I got to meet um, pretty much everyone um, at your organization. And that was interesting, right? Cause that was my first trip, like business trip of, I want to say since it was a golf trip, February of last year. And um, it was great to meet all your people and, um, you know, just be in person again, Dave. It was, uh, I think, well, that was the overriding, you know, sentiment from all of our guests. We had 100, 128 attendees. Most of them, it was the first time they traveled for over a year. And, uh, you know, we had a good tournament, a good turnout, and uh, a lot of good networking for everybody. So, I think last year was our 26th year sponsoring that event. So we'll, uh, we look to continue that and uh, we'll see you again there next year. You'll get an invite. We already locked down. I can announce it. We're, go we're playing the Weston Stonebriar. We're staying at the Weston. Uh, they did a big remodel at that. So the, uh, you know, my home course and the namesake of my company uh, is where the event will be held uh, next year. So uh, that'll be exciting. Excellent. No, that was a lot of fun. And um so you mentioned growing generational talent. Like, can we talk about that? Like, how are you getting like newer people and keeping them engaged, Dave, to keep wanting to go up the ranks? Well, the one thing you do is every 10 years sell a company. So you get a blank sheet of paper to, to start over. Uh, so we've been lucky or fortunate enough to do that. Uh, 
you know, three times. So you think about that in all kinds of ways uh, from how you build the balance sheet and what industries are, you know, uh, hot or uh, over, uh, over, overextended or something like that. So you're always thoughtful. You do the same thing with people, right? It's just, uh, it's like upgrading an NFL roster. You get a chance to add, you know, new or uh, fresh talent to the organization, even at the senior level, you know, adding someone like Steve White to the organization was, uh, you know, was of a significant add and, you know, he's been very valuable running our capital markets uh, side of our business. So, you know, you started with six and I think at the end of the first 18 months or the eight months, we had 12 and then you're 25 and then you're 35 and then you're 47. And, you know, that's kind of, we, we really start tapping out uh, uh, at around 50 or so in head count. You know, we have a, um, we have a fully developed, uh, you know, my CFO has been with me, Tim Alazo, since the, we started Transamerica. Uh, he's got a great staff underneath him. Uh, Andy Fletcher, same thing, Transamerica, two, you know, two good young lawyers behind him that work well. So our legal team's in good shape, our finance team's in good shape. You know, our credit team is the strength of the organization. You know, uh, Jeff Wilkson and I go back to the late 80s. He runs our rail car business as well. Uh, Jeff McCoy's with him. He's been with our organizations uh, 20 plus years. Dirk Stock and Ron Lynn go back to the um, ITT days. Ron Lynn and I go back to Kansas in the CIT days. Uh, and then you've added a bunch of, uh, you know, just, um, you know, kids that, uh, you know, in their mid twenties or so, we, we're, we haven't been real uh, active in hiring people right out of college. We like to hire people that are, uh, you know, maybe a few years out of school that have a little, what we'd like to say, life experience. Uh, we've had a lot of success of hiring kids that are uh, were former athletes it doesn't matter if it's a swimmer or, you know, what they played. They, uh, they know how to get up in the morning, they know how to work. They know failure. They've been yelled at, uh, which we don't do that. But, uh, you know, they just know how to manage things, right? So it's, it's worked really well. As I think about the org chart today, I think I have, I have nine people in their 20s, 10 in their 30s, you know, 10 in their 40s, and then, uh, you know, the rest of us in the executive platinum division, as I like to call it, not, not gray. So it's well diverse. It's, uh, it's set up well for generational talent. And, uh, you know, you get these young kids in here and you empower them, you teach them, and you try to get out of their way and let them, uh, let them have success and make a few mistakes. And it's our job to, uh, you know, transfer everything that we, uh, we've learned over all these years and someone did for us to, uh, to pay it forward to them. And I think we do a very good job of that. Uh, very good about, uh, or feel very good about where the organization stands today as, uh, uh, as we go forward the next, you know, we're always, we're always thinking the next five to 10 years out and that's how we think about it, so. No, and like, uh, like I said, everyone that I met with there was very friendly. Everyone's on team Stonebriar, um, just good attitudes. That's, uh, you know, one of the things, one of the, the, the culture throughout the organizations, uh, you know, it, it, it's the same culture throughout the entire organization. It's a real team and uh, very cohesive, very collaborative. Everyone's on pulling the rope the same direction. And, and, and you can tell that works. You know, we don't have that many people. If, it, if you had someone that didn't, it would stick out, if you will. So, right. and that's a testament to our leadership team. You know, we've got some great leaders managing all these, uh, managing all the people in the businesses. So I just try to stay out of the way and do things like this with you. <laughs> and for that, I'm thankful. There you go. <laughs> so, um, you know, talking on equipment finance, Dave, um, obviously you've been in the industry for, I want to say what, 30, almost 30 years? Almost 40 years now. 40 years. Okay. was off by a decade. Sorry about that. Um, one of the reasons I'm doing these is to, for newer people that are getting in to the industry, just to kind of get some pointers uh, in regards to, you know, I'm just getting in here. How do I become successful? How do I go through an org chart uh, to continue to ascend in organizations. What, I guess, recommendations would you have to some newer people who are getting in to the industry? Well, it'd, be, it'd be the same message we tell our kids, you know, just our young ones, get involved, whether it's through the LFA, which we're, you know, significant supporters of and always have been, uh, join the various committees and organizations there like ETAC, if you will, things like that. I have the only, I think I have the only senior VP in my company uh, is a, a, the only male as a member of the women's council. Uh, but he's been a great addition to that. So we're back, we're actively involved. Um, we, uh, you know, we have a lot of little, a lot of isms that we, uh, you know, stay true to, like, you know, take every meeting, go, go, you know, if there's someone in the organization that, uh, 
you don't have much exposure to, or you're not sure really what they do, go ask. They'll, they'll, you know, they'll take the time and walk you through it. And, and you know, they have a vested interest in, you know, you know, their career development personally and professionally and things like that. So uh, it's, uh, and it, you know, that starts from the top and it resonates down. Everybody's uh, kind of goes back to the culture, right? So that's, yep. you know, that's what we tell a lot of these young kids. And then when we go to the, you know, we go to the conferences when we get to see them. I met, that's going to be one of the biggest things everyone missed is the interpersonal connections and this, the invaluable uh, interaction you get and relationship building from doing this versus being face to face. Right. Yeah. We, uh, I look forward to the annual convention this year. I don't know how many people will be there live, but, uh, I'm going to go shake every one of their hands. I can't wait to see him. I mean, I miss my friends. I got a lot of friends in this industry after all these years. I just miss, it was the best thing about our golf outing. You just got to see a lot of people that are at our outing. Yeah. Um, no, that's a, that's a, that's a great point. And I'm curious to see what those numbers are going to be in regards to attendance and that trending and everything. Yep. I know as soon as I got the early bird thing, I went and signed up. <laughs> like Doug, did too. I signed up for golf. I got hotel rooms booked. I'm going in early. Yep. I'll Show be there Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a great golf course too. Isn't that where like the AT&T Oh. Yeah, it's one one of the one of the events is played there. So that's it's a great facility. It's a great property for this uh, for this conference. So looking forward to it. Nope, nope. <clears throat> uh, yeah. So we have like there's the NIFA event. I don't I know you guys don't go to that. There'd be no probably value in NIFA for you, but that event's in October. So that's like two weeks before that. Nice. But um, be curious to see what those attendance numbers are as well. Yeah, it will be. It will be uh, interesting to monitor all that. The second half of the year you know we have other conferences outside of you know the equipment finance side of it from aviation has their own uh you know different set of things that we attend the real estate business does uh, maritime does as well so you know a number of our people will be attending a lot of those events the the on the financing side the abs conferences are vegas is having one and uh, there's always one in the west in vegas and one in the east in miami they're having those both in october and in uh december this year so I got to miss one of them due to a scheduling conflict, but we'll, uh, same thing. We'll be out there. We'll attend those conferences and, you know, hope to meet with as many of our 70 plus investors, uh, as we can and all of our bankers and our bank group, things like that. So pre pre COVID, right. Did you ever have your camera on for meetings like this or was it just conference calls? I never had, uh, I never had a zoom call, if you will, or very rarely, uh, like we had, to. Uh, all pivot to uh you know over a year ago now right so um you just adapt and overcome you just deal with what you have to deal with in the society you're in i mean people ask me are you know what was your biggest you know we had a surge during the COVID environment we always do and whether it's a financial crisis or a recession or a global health pandemic our business always has a uh you know has a uh, uptick in volume and credit quality and things like that we didn't it was no different last year uh, if you would ask me the uh you know the biggest you know, probably success out of all of that is accomplishing it without having your marketing guys be able to travel and go meet face to face with customers. I mean, that's our fastball. Yeah. We get us in front of, you know, we can write a big check. We got great capital where we can do leasing, all these different assets. But, um, you know, we do very well when we get in front of our customers and form the relationships and, and uh, deploy the capital that they need and the assets they need to make money in their businesses. Um, and that really just started you know, you know, started uh, ramping back up here in the, you know, the first quarter of this year. So it's, it's by no means a, you know, steady state or back to full, uh, full deployment. So, so a lot, be an- lot of upside left. I think there's a lot of upside left in this whole industry. Oh, absolutely. That'll just be an interesting conversation <laughs> between you and Tim coming up in October, November for budget planning for next year, because he's going to be like, well, look what we were able to do without having all the sales <laughs> expense. That would yeah. be. <laughs> it always is. I don't, you know, once you get, once you're this far into the uh, business, uh, you can't stop what really rolls off from the balance sheet right now. So it's doing really well. And, you know, we just throw some numbers in there and our guys always seem to do well with it. So we'll, uh, we'll just keep doing what we're doing. That's fair. Now, will you still continue to use the camera for meetings moving forward? You know, I've been on two today already. Uh, I kind of like, I don't know when it was a month ago and Jamie Dimon said he was done with it. And I'd go to his CEO conference all the time. I kind of, I was saying the same thing, but yeah, you got to do what you got to do. Right. So, yep. uh, we'll, 
it's just part of uh, part of the business now. No, that's that's fair. Um, kind of curious to see what that trend is a year from now. But I sure. hope to be able to see as many people as I can in person. I, yep. I did, you know, used to traveling a lot. Everybody is, and uh, you know, we like uh, we like seeing our friends and and our customers and our our partners and the OEMs and the business we do business with. So um, we'll see how it goes. So I ask everyone who's on here, Dave, to have them tell a little fun fact about themselves. Fun fact. Well, everyone knows I like to golf, so I'm, that's not a fun fact. Well, I'm the, uh, I'm the youngest of five kids. I grew, up on a, uh, I grew up on a farm in north central Kansas, about 500 miles straight north of here. So I'm not sure how many people would know that, actually. Uh, you know, when you, you learn how to work hard and do all those kind of things and put in long hours and, you know, we had crops and livestock and all that. I had, uh, you know, I belonged to an organization called, you know, the 4-H Club. You'd go to the local and county fairs and you took your calf or your, or your pigs and things like that and showed them and ultimately sold them and I, uh, I named all my 4-H calves for eight years after the uh, big red machine and the Cincinnati Reds because I was a Cincinnati Red fan. Okay. So I had, you know, Johnny Benches and or Johnny's and Pete's and, you know, just all the uh, Joe Morgans. And uh, that's how I thought about all my uh, 4-H calves. So uh, same thing with my, uh, my first litter of pigs, I remember. I only had six. It was a small litter. I can remember their names. Mike and Mike, Pete and Joe, and Sue and Pam. So there's a little fun fact for the uh, for the audience that uh, takes me back about 50 years. Now, do you, do you have any any livestock right now? Any? No, you know, I was the young. My brother, uh, after my folks passed, uh, my brother ended up uh, taking care of that place, and we rented it out to neighbors. And he he ultimately, uh, I, I can't remember how long ago. I'd been in Texas then, 30 years, and he sold the place. So, uh, you know, that's uh, but that's where it all started excellent i grew up on 300 acres of grapes so there was no livestock it was the other side of farming yeah, well, it's, a, it's a different life right it, uh, it, it was 100 degrees in the uh, summertime and 30 below in the winter time and uh, you know there was a lot of work to do all the time so so dave um i know we've already went into some detail regarding stonebriar but at the end of the day mm -hmm any independents out there, I guess just in finance companies in general, why do you business with Stonebriar? Well, we have, you know, we always, we talk about that internally all the time and we have, you know, we have several fastballs. Obviously we're a large ticket leasing company, That that's a differentiator in itself and the size of the check that we can write, you know, five to $150 million plus is, uh, is, is very rare. You know, we can leverage off of our ownership group at Eldridge and our sister company at, uh, our affiliated company at Security Benefit, and you know access to a thirty billion dollar balance sheet there. So there's there's just a significant amount of capital that uh, creates a high barrier to entry and makes us uh, even more unique than what I think we already are in this space. So uh, you know we look at a lot of deals. We 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 have a lot of data, like uh, I was talking about with the baseball analogy. But it seems like we fund about one out of every ten deals we look at. Doesn't doesn't mean we like didn't like all the others. We just stick to our disciplines and uh, give them terms and structures that, uh, you know, we think are appropriate and some of them don't like them. <laughs> so we'll, uh, you know, we'll continue to do those things. Uh, you know, we re we've originated over a billion dollars a year in new business the last, I don't know, four or five years. So I don't see that trend stopping. We're constantly looking at, uh, you know, new strategic initiatives. Uh, you know, our, we recently named Nick Sandler president of this organization. That's where he and I spend, uh, you know, a significant amount of our time, uh, and he's uh, he'll be moving to Texas here in the next month. So, uh, you know, those are things that we'll look to do to, to just drive the value of Stonebriar for, you know, for shareholders and investors and our customer base. Uh, so, a lot, a lot of upside in the business, uh, and very excited about the uh, future of the industry and and our company. We got a lot of good young people here that uh, next generational talent, and it's always about the people. Always has been. Sooner or later, I'll be done and come play golf with you all the time. And, hey, and uh, we got room. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Dave. Well, I really appreciate your time um, this morning. And um, what we got? Two months? Two months from the annual? There you go. We'll see you there.
Look forward to seeing you there, sir. Thank you very All much right. for your time. Yep. Thanks for your time. Thanks for the invite. Take care. Have a good day.